What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with a kind of Android app review that I haven't done in some time where I actually review the Android app as I am in the app. So in this case, it's going to be the Roller Coaster Tycoon um, add-on packs that you can get through the Android version of the game. And these are the same, as far as I know, add-on packs that you can get, you know, on Steam and other platforms as well. But the Android app has them available for purchase and use as well. So what you can do once you install the game is bottom right of the game. There's this nice little and you can get the options to view um, all three add-on packs, particularly Wacky Worlds, Time Traveler, and the two. The first two add-on packs, Wacky Worlds and Planet Coaster, are $1.99 each. And the toolkit is for $5.99, so there's something to consider when you're buying them. I didn't see a way to purchase all three of them at the same time, or all three at a discount rate, so as far as I know, there's no special promotion to buy all three at the same time, or special discount that you can buy all three at the same time. So one of the things to do, and for me, the reason I bought all three was because I had some Google Play credits available for the rewards. So I was like, you know what, it's not going to cost me anything, so it doesn't hurt to buy them all. If it doesn't work, then oh well, I lose um, about, uh, say, I lose about uh, 10 bucks, but it's $10 in Google Opinion Rewards credit, so no loss to me personally, so a little bit of a uh, bias there. But if it works, then even better, I save myself $10. So um, the three purchases to note are available to buy through um, the Google Play purchasing um, setup. So if you do have a card saved on file through Google Play, you can use that one. Or if you have some uh, credits or points available to use, you can use those as well. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So the first thing we're gonna, um, or the first thing I'm gonna go through, is the Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic Toolkit. So the benefit of this here is that you can set up your own scenario if you want. So if you want to set up a park with your own rides, which I'm not gonna do in this review, but we can jump into it. So you can um, set up, you know, for example, which. Um, attractions you want to have available in your park. If you want to have certain um, footpaths available, you can do that. Um, if you want theming and um, what kind of entrances you want, the natural um, stuff, you can do that. If you want a uh, uh, landscape editor, you can have, or once you do that, you can set up um, your landscape editor. Um, so, So, I guess you have to pick um, certain bits of land. Um, I'm not sure. Actually, I, that's one of those things that I haven't tested. Um, oh, okay, and then you have to build your park entrance. So, um, entrance. Place plan entrance. And then you have to build your um, entrance and all that. So you can basically set up your own um, theme park scenario. So you can um, create your own park if you want to have that set up. So that's kind of what that is. So it's um, basically as the name um, indicates that you can set up your, you can create your own park scenario to share with other people, your friends, whatever. Now my favorite part of this is the ride design. So let's say that you're in the middle of a game, you get a roller coaster or some other amusement that park, um, park element that you really like, but you don't know if the ride's gonna work, you don't know if it's going to, how much it's gonna cost, or anything like that. That's where the um, ride designer comes into play. So, for example, the one that I've been testing is the Looping Roller Coaster. So let's say you wanted to build your own looping roller coaster, but you don't know if it's gonna work. You wanna kinda see you wanna build it and then you want to put it into a park to see how much it's gonna cost, then that's where this comes into play. So we can since I practiced this a little bit more than the park the scenario editor, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build a quick roller coaster that um, has worked for me and that I kind of like, so I'm going to build a, a looping roller coaster that has 
um, five loops in it, and that's kind of um, one of those things where um, um, building it in a in the park itself when you're in an actual scenario kind of sucks because um, you may not have the funds, you may not um, it might not fit. Um, your the guests in the park might find it too scary and things like that so that's always something that kind of sucks is that you don't know if um, your guests are gonna like the rides that you build but in the um, ride editor you can um, build the ride to whatever specs you want just to see if it'll work and all that get the excitement rating and then you can save it in um, save the ride as your own as a ride that you set up so that way um, if you do want to end up putting it in the park then you can um, do so so now that we have um, so we've done that we finished the ride you still have to put in the entrance and exit so let's stick those in there and then you'll, you'll get the usual ride options of setting the number of cars per train. So in this case, we're going to just do one car. And um, let's see if this ride works. I don't think I might have built the initial um, lift high enough, but let's see. If, if not, then um, I'm, I'll, I'll redo it with a higher lift. That's one of those things where I sometimes I rush myself and then I don't build it too high or high enough and then the loops don't work because the train doesn't have enough speed. The other thing we can always try is to um, have a smaller car so um, instead of the seven cars that I had we can um, put five cars instead or four so that it um, doesn't have enough res or doesn't have as much resistance as a seven car ride. So with that being said, there the ride worked and uh, it was able to get through it. So if you can go um, back into the ride and you can check. So um, so once the ride has gone through, you can get the um, velocity, altitude, vertical Gs, lateral Gs and all of that. So you, um, you can get real time uh, track data. Um, test results I guess if there's um, test results if you want to set up a um, color scheme then you can set up um, a color scheme per train like that so a pretty nifty ride editor and as you can see when you're going through all the different rides you can um, play around with all the different rides just to see kind of what um, things will happen if you want to set up um, um, I guess entrances and exits with cats and stuff, you can do all that sort of stuff as well. So, a pretty nifty way to design your own ride. So, if you want to create the ride without having to worry about doing it while you're in the actual level, then the toolkit definitely comes into um, is a very good way to do all that sort of stuff. Now, as far as the other two expansion packs go, with Wacky Worlds, you get a nice little separation by beginner, challenging, and expert parks. So the next gameplay that you're going to see is the, my gameplay of the Grand Canyon. So I I started playing it, and I wanted, I'm wanted i going to finish that up. As you could, um, I did go through it once, but it was kind of a rush job. So I'm going to go through it, play through the game, or play through that map, and um, see how it goes. I did try playing the Great Wall in the map because there was... Um, no cost to enter the park, no uh, ride costs, or anything like that. So uh, one of those things that I wanted to try was just to see if I could go through it. But it kept running, like I kept getting run out of time. I wasn't getting enough people in the park, so I kept failing the mission. So I decided to um, move on from that and um, try the um, Grand Canyon one because it's one of those maps that is a little bit easier. You have your usual objective of, of a thousand guests and 600 park rating, so I thought that's a little bit more doable. Um, there was a little bit of a point where I thought it couldn't be done because it, you still have to, in this case, you do have to um, um, have a budget and pay for the rise and entrance fee and all that, but as it turns out, um, something that I figured found out after, well, as I was playing it was that there is an actual um, entrance fee to the park, which I, it, the admission price is a default of $10, so 
in my ga initial gameplay, I think I got up to 45 or $50, because I started testing it a little bit just to see what, what uh, I could do, and $50 was too much, but $45 is not enough, so I'll probably stick it out there where I do um, um, $45 or something right like that and play around with a little a little bit, but um, that's something to note there. So with that, I'm also probably going to try one of the um, other maps as well, so I'll probably play around with... Um, so like it looks like for the ch in the challenging parts, you can have the Africa map that has 900 guests and a park rating of 600 by year two. With Asia, the or the India map in Asia, it looks like a thousand guests with a park rating of 600. So I might give that a try because um, this looks, I'm not sure uh, why that would be a challenging because a park rating of thousand guests at the end of year three with a park rating of 600. So. Um, it looks like um, it would be a, a lot of a um, maybe a water park, but so it looks like a. I guess the challenging part is that it's a. Um, oh, actually, it's not that small of a park because it does look like it's the full scenario editor. So um, I don't know. That looks like a it looks like a big park. So it looks like there might be a way to. Um, have a complete park um, with enough room to build so I guess it all depends on um, how the guests are and all that so let's see um, the only other thing I can think of it looks like there is an admission price so that's probably the other thing to consider so um, looks like default funding is for everything and normal so we'll probably have to adjust that a little bit but um, that's one of those things to consider before starting the park is to um, take a look at what options are available and what um, what all the initial setup is at and then take it from there. So that's one of the things which helps playing the game only once a week that I can go in, start playing around, seeing what rides scare people and don't scare people and take it from there. Now the third add-on pack is the time travel or time twisters um, or, um, add on pack, which has a similar breakdown as Wacky World, but it is, um, it looks like it's more of actual time travel, um, related, um, parks. So you can have the Dark Ages, you can have uh, Robin Hood versus Dark Ages Castle, you have a futuristic. So, a similar thing was broken down by making uh, a challenge being an expert, so. Um, like I said, for the next gameplay, I'm going to be doing the easy uh, map for the Wacky World and then the challenging part. And I'm thinking that I might do a similar thing here where uh, I try maybe uh, playing one of these where um, I uh, try to do the park where I have to get a park rating or have enough gas or something like that. So. Um, um, that's kind of the plan going forward, but as you can see, in the, you can play all of these different um, add-on packs um, in the game without, with, um, you know, usual purchases. You don't have to buy all of them, so it's one of those things where if you want to um, just buy one of the add-on packs, you can just to try it out. If you want this toolkit to build your rides, you can do that. Um, it does not unlock all the levels in the um, actual game, so if you're trying to do a gameplay of all the different uh, maps for Roller Coaster 1 and 2, that is not available, so you still have to play through those like you normally would do, but if you want to test out rides or play some different maps that are not part of the original groupings, then that is definitely something you can do. So with that being said, that is all for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on social media by visiting the website, headphonesmeal.reviews, with past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in. Our episode and review. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time.